Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Uh, we're going to be dealing with textures in this uh, part of the series and we're going to start with defining what a texture is. So textures in Stingray are actually a set of instructions or settings and they control things like platform controls, compression settings, and mipmap settings. And within those settings are going to be images or an image specifically for each texture. And those textures are controlled by the container that they live within. So it's very important to understand that a texture is not just the image, but also the settings that encapsulate it. Okay, so how exactly do we create a texture? Well, there are four primary ways. We're going to start with the most common, which is to be importing a sample. Okay, so here we're going to see that we're importing the sample and we're going to go ahead and select our sample. And then we're going to go ahead and hit open. And as soon as we hit this button, Stingray will automatically create our texture, okay? So we might think at first that this is the sample, but by opening up this little dialog and saying show all files, we will reveal the actual sample and the texture that is created. So we're going to call this a texture sample pair, okay? And generally speaking, we're only going to be dealing with the texture. So if we go ahead and close this down again and hide them, we will be left with what we are going to generally be using throughout Stingray, which is the texture. But it is important to realize that it's not just a texture, but actually a texture sample pair, and that we have controls over these textures. The second way we can create a texture is by importing a model that already has materials and textures applied. So here we're looking at a Maya file, and if we look closely, we can see that it already has a texture sample and it is already uh, set to go. So this model has all of its materials and textures applied, and now we're just gonna go ahead and export it, okay? So let's go ahead and finish the export. And in Stingray, when we import that model, let's just select it and hit open. We're gonna see that we have this option to import textures and make sure that we create a, a textures folder and go ahead and hit the import button. And you'll see that not only will the model be imported and all of its materials, but in addition, we're gonna find that the textures are in the textures folder are also created. And again, if we go ahead and reveal the, uh, the files, we're gonna see that each one of these textures now has a texture and a sample um, as we did in the previous example. Another way we can create textures is by baking reflection probes. Now, these are more specialty, and we're not going to really control them the way we would any other texture, but it is another way we can create textures. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and drop a reflection probe into our scene and place it, and we're just going to move it into its position. So we're going to rename it and give it a nice name, something like umbrella underscore reflection underscore probe. And we're going to go ahead and set its position and cut, kind of just adjust it into a nice location where the reflection probe will render nicely. Then once we go ahead and hit lighting, bake reflection probes, we're going to see that all of our textures are created just as before. Again, we don't use these like traditional textures, but you should know that they're there. The last way is by creating a, a light map. Okay, this is very similar to what we did with the reflection probes, only um, this is a, a different process. So here we can see our scene has no lighting. We're gonna go ahead and hit light baking and select our options within the light baking settings and then just hit bake lighting. Once the light baking is complete, we're gonna see that we now have light map textures that are automatically generated and created and put into their correct location. Okay, so the next question we're gonna be asking ourselves is where can we actually apply these textures? And the answer is in a multitude of places. So the first place is gonna be in our traditional mesh slots. So let's go ahead and find our uh, floor mesh and let's just take a quick look. We're gonna see that there are some materials applied to it. So we're gonna grab the patio uh, floor uh, material 
And now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and apply some textures or we're going to swap over this texture to a completely different texture. So I'm changing over the color map and I'm going to change over the normal map and I'm going to go ahead and change over the RMA map as well. And once we do this, we'll see that this entire uh, material has been changed with textures. So it's important to realize that though we have a material applied to a model, it's not static. We can change the materials or the textures that are applied to it uh, so long as they work. So here we have, um, you know, an example where we have completely changed the textures of a given material. So the next thing we can do is we can apply textures to a particle effect. So here I'm going into the smoke particle effect and I've opened up the, uh, the particle effect manager or the particle effect window. And now all we have to do is go ahead and grab the billboard visualizer, just getting a better view of it. But now we're going to grab the billboard visualizer and inside there we can see that it's related to a material. If we find that material, we're going to see that it has some mesh slots and we can just drag a new texture into that mesh slot and voila, the particle effect will alter to reflect that change. So here we can see that the smoke has changed. Another place where we can use textures is in our terrain. So uh, I'm just opening up my landscape uh, terrain material and Inside of it, we can see that we have some uh, textures that can be applied, uh, namely the base color, the red base color, green base color, etc. And by swapping them, we can see in the hillsides in the background that the textures are changing. So very easy. Uh, we can just swap out our textures and they will relate to wherever we have painted our red base color, our green base color, blue base color, etc. So uh, very straightforward and uh, another use for our textures. Moving on to decals. Uh, decals are effectively a projector that has a texture built into it. And um, just as before, we're going to go ahead and locate its material. And once we find that material, we can go ahead and change out the color map or, uh, you know, because they're able to hold multiple slots, we could theoretically put a normal map in there or whatever else we want. But as you can see, by simply swapping the textures, we will get a new resulting image. Light sources also can hold uh, textures. So here I have created a special material just for this light source and we can see that it's got a blue halo around that light. So if we go into its property editor of the material that is applied to the candle, we can go ahead and swap out that texture and we can see that the blue halo just becomes a blue solid beam and now it becomes more of just a light blue and once again we can go back to that blue halo. Uh, which works really nicely for this candle. So let's just put it back on top and we can see that the glow of the orange is in the center whereas the blue halo emulates it kind of going through that glass. So where else are textures applied? We've already seen that anything that we create pretty much has a texture just as so long as we've given it a material and that material has slots for textures. Well, we can also put it into the shading environment. So here we're going to go ahead and apply it to our lens dirt. Okay, so if we go into the bloom area, we're going to see that there's a lens dirt map. And if we go ahead and grab ourselves a texture, we can slap that texture into that lens dirt location. And then once we increase the lens dirt amount, we can see that we're going to get some nice effects right on the camera that feel like a, uh, you know, kind of like a dirty lens. Right? So um, this can be useful for multiple things, but is just another use for textures. Okay, So as we can see, textures are used in a lot of locations. So understanding these textures is pretty important. We can also, inside the shading environment, go ahead and change our sky dome, which is also a texture. So let's go ahead and grab some new skies and put them into place. And as we can see, the sky has changed. And this can have dramatic effects. A different sky again. And another sky. And finally, let's put it back to the original one. 
and another use for textures, as we can see. So I spoke earlier about how textures were really not the sample itself, but actually a set of instructions. So how do we edit those instructions, right? So we have a dedicated interface, and there's two different ways of getting to it. Let's go through method one, which is going to be going into your texture manager directly, and we just go window texture manager to get there, and then we can search for whatever it is that we want to find. So I'm going to look for color, which gives me all my color maps. So if I wanted to, you know, change a bunch of color maps all at the same time, I can do it this way. Uh, and then once I select it, that's pretty much it. So we can go ahead and edit those you know, details later. Another way to get to the texture manager is by going into a, you know, uh, texture and simply double clicking on the specific one we want. The benefit of doing it this way is that it takes you directly to the texture that you're looking for. So um, you can still go ahead and search if you want to or filter down however you'd like, but those are two different ways to get to the texture manager. Okay, so what exactly does the texture manager do? Now, the texture manager is here so that we can edit the instructions that I spoke about earlier, right? So now we can see how we actually edit these instructions. So if we select a texture, what we're going to find is that we have this, uh, this panel that has all sorts of options in it, and we can edit them per platform. So right now I'm just going to show you how it would work with Windows, but the same thing would be true for, you know, uh, mobile platforms or you know whether or not you're gonna go to the web or whatever else you have the same options okay one of the big ones is going to be discarding the top MIP maps the reason you would want to do this is on something like mobile where you don't have the video memory you might want to discard your top uh, your top MIP maps um, so you would just select iOS or one of your mobile platforms and change that uh, to you know one or two to discard the top ones we can change things like the sRGB or we can even make things streamable, very useful um, to reduce your memory consumption. So as you can see, there's quite a number of options in here. Uh, you can organize things, and this is the tool you're gonna use to optimize your textures uh, for final deployment. Okay, so that's gonna conclude this tutorial. Uh, hopefully you found it very useful and interesting. Uh, I know it was a lot of uh, very quick and brief uh, introductions to a lot of core concepts, but it is important to understand how textures work, and I just wanted to make sure everyone had the knowledge that they needed to be able to get started, you know, really working with textures and with materials. So this is kind of a foundation, and I hope you, uh, hope it serves you well, all right? Thanks a lot for watching.